Hello, this is the specimen of a bowel, and you can see that it includes the terminal ileum as well as the cecum and ascending colon. Now, at first glance, it is quite abnormal in terms of the structure, and this is for several reasons. First of all, the small bowel loops are adherent to each other over the serosal surface, as you can see here. And secondly, the wall of the cecum and ascending colon is markedly thickened. Let's have a closer look. When we examine the wall of the large bowel, we can see that uh, it is pretty much a transmural thickening with this ill-defined uh, pale brownish area. Now, if you look carefully, you can see that within this area, there are some paler areas that are almost whitish in appearance and somewhat geographic. These represent areas of caseous necrosis, and these areas of thickening are due to numerous large confluent granulomas. So the diagnosis in this case is intestinal tuberculosis, and this can cause marked thickening of the wall of the gut due to granulomatous inflammation. It can also cause ulceration. Most of the time, the ulcers are relatively superficial, and the interesting thing is that they are often oriented perpendicular to the long axis of the bowel. So for example, if this is the long axis, the ulcers will be oriented in a perpendicular fashion. We don't really observe the ulcers very clearly here. In severe cases, there may actually be deeper ulcers and even perforation or fistula formation with adjacent organs and structures. Now let's have a look at the serosal surface. And sometimes, if we are fortunate, we will be able to see enlarged pericolic lymph nodes as well. Um, in this instance, there is a suggestion that this mass here may represent enlarged lymph nodes, and we could also look for caseous necrosis within these lymph nodes, which would also be involved by granulometers inflammation. One very important thing to take note of in this condition is that it can closely mimic cancer. If you look at this gross appearance with the thickening of the bowel wall, which results in marked luminal narrowing and stricture formation, this may appear radiologically similar or even identical to a tumor mass. And if they are associated enlarged lymph nodes, uh, this also again goes to favor the appearance of malignancy. Therefore, in these instances, usually only a tissue biopsy, when we examine the tissue microscopically, will give us the answer. The other important differential diagnosis is inflammatory bowel disease, in particular Crohn's disease, because Crohn's disease can also give rise to distortion of the bowel, ulceration, although the ulcers are usually deeper, but it also involves a similar location in the ileocecal region, and it also can give rise to deep ulcers, fissures, and fistulation. Clinically, these patients may actually present with intestinal obstruction. When the bowel wall is markedly thickened with many enlarged lymph nodes, there may even be a palpable abdominal mass. Uh, these patients may also present if there is ulceration with GI bleeding, and in the worst instances, there may be perforation. They may also experience systemic symptoms, as in all cases of TB infection, such as fever, loss of weight, and night sweats. So in summary, this is a case of intestinal tuberculosis, uh, in this instance giving rise to adhesions of the bowel loops and involving the ileocecal region, also giving rise to marked thickening of the bowel wall due to granulomatous inflammation and narrowing of the lumen, as well as several enlarged pericolic lymph nodes.